Hi guys, Jason Smith here, down at Very Golf Range in Suffolk, and today we're going to have a quick chat about these little things. Mizuno CLK 2020. Now this is possibly going to be one of those clubs which go under the radar a little bit, because they, Mizuno kind of released these on the back of the ST200 uh, wood launch, and with all the hype that you get with drivers, and a little bit of fairway woods, but mainly drivers, Things like re a replacement in the um, hybrids, at least, can be completely overlooked. And you've been forgiven to be doing the exact same thing with these because on the face of it, yes, have they changed a bit on the sole? Yes, they look slightly different. Um, they don't look, uh, you've got a bit of blue in there now, you've still got that wave technology that but it's really, really deep now uh, and goes right to the very end. I mean, you can't see necessarily that there, but that goes all the way from the toe cut straight through to the screw which holds the loft sleeve and that loft sleeve again is the same as last year so if you've got your custom fit shaft um, it'll pop straight in um, and again you've got that standard you've got one and two degrees up uh, in loft one and three or two degrees down in loft you've also got some upright settings in there as well like three degrees up you can go up to if you really want to to try and get it going um, a certain way but um, the interesting thing we just sort of say of these because there's also some interesting ways that the custom fitters can dial these in when it comes to loft and also face angle we'll chat about that more when we go hit some balls in my custom fitting suite anyway the face got a new face uh, for this year um, miraging steel and it is is masc1 ms whatever it is um, basically it just means that they can continue on to uh, give you brilliant ball speeds and these things always did the old clks if anything for me just went too far and i was having to put loft on them to try them back as much as i could do because they just go too far um which is always a fun thing to have having clubs which go too far so you're having to dial them back so they've changed the face anyway to try and make spin profiles slightly a little bit more consistent on the face one complaint they did have about the um, old CLK, and it is quite old now, it's two and a half years old, um, that with the wave technology in there, it was exceptionally good out of bottom shots. So when you thin, basically, the hybrid, um, heel or toe, doesn't matter, but it would produce very, very good ball speed, regardless of the fact of how poor you struck it out of the bottom. But it was a little bit inconsistent when it comes to the top part of the golf club, when you hit it slightly high on the face. What it would do is it would launch quite high, but then drop the spin right off. So depending on your swing speed, if you're a slower swing speed, it would kind of fall out of the sky. And if you had a faster swing speed, you'd get them bomb balls and it would just carry, which is great to a certain extent. However, it needs to be controlled so that difference when it comes to distance isn't too great. Um, you always accept that if you're going to scuzz one, that it's not going to go the number that you want. The whole idea is these things are supposed to be as forgiving as they can do, so that number is as close as it possibly can. But yeah, so they've changed that. Obviously they've changed the um, wave technology undercut. Um, there is a progression in head size. So necessarily when it comes to like the, uh, the five and then goes to the two. So I've got the two, is that the two? Yeah, that's the two. Um, the two, when it comes to the head, there's a difference between the two, the three, the four, the five. The five is not so deep. The two is a little bit deeper. Obviously, when you get to a point of when you get that kind of um, little amount of loft, I mean, this is 16 degrees, can go 15, 14, 14 degrees of loft from a hybrid. Um, they also can do 17, 18 as well. But because of the fact that it hasn't got a lot of loft, um, if anything, what it needs to do is that needs that CG needs to be as far back as it possibly can do to try and encourage a slightly higher flight. If not, you get too many of those boring trajectories never going to stop going to a green. The shaft, I've got this in the uh, CK or 10C CK series, 80 gram TX Flex, um, and they're half inch shorter. Um, let's go hit these in my custom fit suite and see how it actually performs. Okay, so we're inside now, I'm gonna do some hitting, live hitting, as long as my back will uh, cope with it. Come off a slight back injury. Now I'm just sort of being a bit kind of careful with it over the uh, next couple of weeks. Anyway, enough about my frailties as a human being. Right, I have the 22, up to 24. So hopefully this should go back to 204 depending on what my back says. 
I should go back to 04. Um, FSX Mobile on the floor. Unfortunately, I can't get the FSX software to work all the way through, so you can see on here because the lights and camera. But I've got it on there, and I'll probably hopefully superimpose it. Hopefully. That's okay. Should be slightly left. I've got the green set out of there, way out there. <laughs> but it doesn't matter. I really need to change that on the old um, screen down there. But how far did that go? To about 209. So that was, a, that was a fair decent hit. Do another one. That's a bit interesting because that is out the bottom. Bottom Healy. Look at that. That'd be an interesting one because that will show you how forgiving or not it is. How far did that go? Oh, I'll get bent down. 199. So I lost about 10 yards from that strike, which is interesting. Let's do one more because I'm just interested. Well, I say quad up here says 201. So it's actually eight yards, like for like. Now this would be an interesting one because that's what I was saying about the top part of the golf club. That was high on the face. That didn't pick them dots up because I buried the bottom club, the bottom dot in the ground. Now, how far is that? So let's carry two or one, same as the last shot. That is very interesting. So out of those, I had one good strike, one slightly bottom healy, and one, that one was high on the face. Now, if you're someone who struggles with a fairway wood, likes your hybrids, it's down to 14 degrees now. Um, 205 for the four. I reckon this could go up to 240, dependent. So obviously you've got the information we're putting up on the screen, uh, FSX. Now FSX, whether it's because it's slightly different um, altitude, I've got this set to exactly where we are. That might be set to sea level, so there might be a few yards um, in it. Anyway, let's go for the full out big daddy 14 degree. So this is all gonna be strike dependent. Pretty good. I mean, that's, yeah, <laughs> that's getting out there now. Two, three, six. I mean, that wasn't, I mean, I'm not swinging full out. Um, lucky enough, I captured data on this pre-injury. <laughs> so you'll be able to see how far it all goes, but this is a live idea of how it performs. That might go left. Yeah, a bit of a skanky hit. You'll be able to see that. A bit of a skanky hit, so dropping down. But still, I mean, I, I mean that's going two, three, two, according to quad, uh, two, three, one, okay, according to, that's like 270 in total. Obviously, we're gonna be hitting into a green. So ideally, although you could hit off the tee, I mean, 270 is, is a very healthy shot for me off the tee. Last one. Nice shot. I'd take that one. Um, obviously, I'm not full out distance at all. I can feel it in my back already. Oh, we didn't get the dots on that one. But how far did that go? According to FSX, uh, 233. Yeah, so I'm losing around about eight or so yards, six, seven, eight yards or so. But if you've got so sort of 205, you've got 30 yards in between. You've got three clubs, 10 yards per club, but you've got all those loft differences in between, all those single degrees, to dial exactly how much distance you want to get every single one of them. Also, because of that loft sleeve that you've got there, that you can move up and down and around and doing all that, you can dial in your shot shape because of obviously how different clubs as you add loft, you make them slightly draw bias on these hybrids and as you take loft away, you slightly fade them. So you can quite easily go to a four and a two depending on how you want your shot shapes done. Before we go do some numbers, I wanna show you how easy it is to flight this up and down 
because even with the poorly back. So I'm going to hit a normal one now, spine allowing. Pretty good, possibly slightly right. My back, I'm getting old. I need a rest, I need a holiday. <laughs> right, so let's see how far that went up. That was a slight, was that a slightly pushy? Yeah, very slightly pushy, still pretty good. Let's see how far that went up, Ryan. You'll be able to see this on the old camera. I'll put this up there so you won't see me have to bend down. Um, peak height 33, um, descending at 44.5. Okay, so let's do another shot. Oh, back, yeah. Um, to lower, lower high. Let's go high. The hardest one for me to do. This is ultimate height. So I've got, still got to try and hit target, which is going to be the hard thing, but yeah, ultimate height. That's pretty good. That is pretty good. I've managed to do a pretty decent job. Hit the number I wanted to within reason. Let's see how high that one went up. I've got the old um, FSX 18, so you probably chances are I can get this up on the screen quicker. So yeah, 43. So that's now descent angle at 50. That's pretty good. So oh, back aches. Um, first one went 206 yards, that went 207. So 1.8 yards or so difference. If you look at the tents. So, and you're looking at another 10 yards in the air. 10 yards in the air. So now we're gonna go for the low one. So what I've gotta try and do now is stop it from hooking too much, because it's the hardest part. Well, it's definitely not hooking. If anything, I've pushed it. So that's now carried about 14 yards or so less because of the lowness. But I'm guessing that's gonna be at least the same distance in total. Let's see if we can get one more. That's still pretty low. I'm going to check the numbers on that in a sec. Let's see if we can get another one to see if we can get it fractionally lower. Oh, I don't know. A pop, it felt a bit poppy. It's a good shot. It's a great shot. I mean, that's if not, it's too far, if anything. But let's just go and have a look. Oh, my back. I'm getting old. We can do the numbers quickly after this. This is, I just want to show you the, here the differences in flights. You can see the differences in flights there alone. What I can do, so if we go, and this is just by the skill set of being understand how to, to deliver loft. So you've obviously got the help that a hybrid is going to give you over a long line anyway of getting, try and get the ball up in the air with the center of gravity lower back. However, if you look, my standard one is 33 in the air. That's descending then at duh, 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 basically 45 degrees, carrying 206. My high one, 43 yards in the air, so 10 yards higher, 30 feet higher in the air from my standard to my high. And that's going 207, so a yard and a bit more if you round them differently. Um, descending at 50 degrees. Now that's coming in at 207 yards at 50 degrees. That is gonna stop on any green. This is made of concrete. But my low one, now how low did I manage to get them? Yeah, I thought my last one was a bit poppy. It was a better shot, but it was a bit poppy. But my first attempt went 15.7 yards in peak height. That's less than half my normal shot. And then the next one was 20.7. It's so much of a better shot, they obviously hit target. And if anything, went probably went too far. We won't be able to see what the total distance is in a little while. We'll have a look on there, yeah. But it just went slightly high. Now, 20 yards in the air is not high when you look at 33 as my normal. Um, but you can see, at the end of the day, it's, yeah, um, carry was 206, 207, 195, obviously for the lower, and then I managed to get to 205 on the last shot, the better shot. But the problem is if you get the low one going in too far, as in carrying too far, you see here the total distance is 229, 226, 220, and 237. So you're now into the 230s and the wrong side of the 230s. Because if you're gonna carry it too far, when it comes to these low shots, you're gonna get that chase. Anyway, but it's a good understanding there how you can just use, rather than using loft as well, you've got the availability using skill set there to dial in height past the given static lofts that you're fit for. Anyway, let's go to the numbers and go see how these performed, my back performed like the clubs do.
Right guys, it's time to have a look at the performance figures side of things. Now, as I said before, I captured this information when my back allowed me to. Uh, this is at full normal speed. Uh, it's not full out speed. I don't mean by full out speed, it's absolutely massive. Just swing out my boots. I just swing a normal speed, which I can't do today. Right, so let's go do the CLK 22. Um, so basically what I did with the 22, the four, is I upped it up to 24 degrees. I've got the um, the 16, I've got that at 18 and at 14. So you can see different loss and yeah. Anyway, so let's go pull the ball data first for the 22, 24 degree. Um, an average ball speed of 131, launching at 16 and a half and 4,000 spin. Now, um, the one good thing about these, these do spin quite well. And now with a decent amount of ball speed, launch and spin, which means they peak height well. Now at normal speed, um, I'm peaking up at 36. Now with 36, that's descending at 46 degrees. That's gonna be stopping at 201 yards carry. That is stopping on any green. Unless it's made of concrete, then you'll need a little bit more. But again, as you saw before, I can then dial the height up if I need to. Anyway, um, let's go over to the um, 16. Um, you can see the flights, by the way. Let's go have a quick look at the flights. I'll show up my, what I mean by the flights, the 24. Um, there's one shot in there that we'll just completely ignore. Um, it makes the dispersion ring, as you can see on the screen there, look a lot worse than it actually is. Um, just by showing on there, yeah. I know an average of 131, but there, it, yeah, 119 miles an hour. It was a poor shot. But again, I'm a human being. So I do hit the occasional rubbish shot from time to time, and there it is. But I hit it, so it's in there. <laughs> it just ruins the dispersion ring. See, normally I'm looking for a dispersion ring to go like that on the screen, which means basically you're still missing left and right. Everyone missed left and right. But the better you are, generally speaking, the better you are, the more close you are dispersion-wise front to back. Um, when it comes to a skilled golfer or a fairly, I would say, high handicapper, the biggest difference you will find is not the left and right dispersion, it's always the front to back. Anyway, so let's go over to the CLK2, the 16 degree, but has that option to go 14, two degrees down, and then also two degrees and one degree in between. But the two, um, 14 and, and which way should we go? The 18 degree? Yeah, we'll go 18 degree first. So, two, 16, up to 18. Ball speed of 139. Moves around, depending on strike, but an average of 12.2 launch. Spinning at 3,000 um, is now then peaking up at 29 yards and going to 20. Now, descent angle of 39, if that's going at a soft green, that's definitely gonna be stopping a bit firmer. I'm gonna have to start flying it up slightly a bit more because it's, it's going in at a green at 220. It's not a short hit. So, but I can still move it up if I need to. Um, but the interesting thing on that, I think if you can see by, let's look at the flights there of the 18. Um, you can see there that my miss is slightly long left. I'll have a couple of hits out to the left and to the right and stuff like that, but if I'm gonna miss, I'll miss them long left. The problem with missing them necessarily long left for me is, I don't mind a driver missing that way because I'm not going for a specific target where dispersion of distance is an issue. Um, I'm just obviously trying to get out there. So I don't mind necessarily missing it long left because I'm aiming slightly down the right and then moving it that way. Um, makes the shot go longer. But in this environment, you can see because of the two hybrid, the 16 up to 18, which now moves the loft looking left slightly. If you're hitting a certain shot shape, which means you're moving the golf ball off to the right. You're fading the golf ball off. You can see there by moving um, the, um, the two from 16 up to 18, makes the loft look a bit further left and it moves your shot shape a little bit. Because if we quickly go over to the same club, but lofted down, now it's 14 degrees. You can see now ball speeds are increased now to 146. Launch has actually stayed the same and spin's only gone down um, about 300 RPM or so. Uh, interesting enough, peak height has gone up by a couple of yards. So that will be more down to me and how I hit it um, more than anything to do with the club because I've reduced the loft, but now I am getting more ball speed now. Um, 
Descent angle of 39.3. Again, if that's going into a green, a soft green, that's gonna be stopping. Anything firmer, then I'm gonna to need to try and flight it up a little bit, but look at the carry now. The carry's going up to 240. And what I'm also quite surprised by looking at the figures there is how consistent I am. I have the odd occasional one that I drop down a little bit, but considering how many shots I have hit, and I'm, I've run out of room on the screen, I've, scroll, I've hit so many, I've scrolled through. Um, you can see that I'm in and around that number all the time. But if you look at the, the flights, so we've seen the uh, flights from the, the two hybrid at 16 up to 18. Now look at the flights from the two hybrid now down to 14. You can see where my miss has now started to move to the right because as I've moved the loft down, it's made the face look slightly right or the loft looks slightly right because how the face twists as you change the loft. Going back to what we were saying about the importance of the fitter, knowing what your shot shape is, what your shot shape would like to be, and then what lofts that you need to have for different gappings, you could then have a potential rather than um, having a three hybrid, which goes off to the right. Well, if you, if you want to dial the, the, the loft um, down on it to try and push it a little bit further, unfortunately, yes, it will go further, but it'll also push your loft, uh, push your shots off to the right. If you go to a two hybrid, shorten the shaft to the same length as your three so it's a normal three but obviously the two head and up the loft it can bring your shot shape to the left and bring it back towards target the importance of fitting these correctly so you can just see that anyway that's quite interesting now on the whole um i'll just have a, literally a loft compare on there so you can see um the difference between the 14 and 18 you can see just from the distance and also where they move but just another little screen just saying the exact same thing visually what i've just said so in conclusion, when it comes to these, feel-wise, they're exactly the same as the old ones. I could not tell. If you swap the heads over without me knowing, close them like, there we go, and pop one on, I would not know what I'm hitting. Obviously, they're slightly different shafts than the old ones, but if you put them in the same shaft, haven't got a clue which they are. What I do notice, though, is that the new ones, because they're slightly a bit more forgiving off the top of the golf club, I'm getting more consistent distance. So when it comes to that last shot there where I was hitting that two, the two with the longer shaft, also reducing the loft as much, it's through D-plane, I am going to be seeing the potential biggest difference when it comes to dispersion and front to back and everything else. And I was amazed just to how well, and I wasn't buttoning these every single time. I'm a human being, I do move around a little bit. I was amazed just how well this thing did um, when you dropped that line. That's just because of that spin profile's main just through design a bit more stable now, depending on the shot shapes that you hit. So yeah, um, is it a massive improvement over the old ones? No. If you've got the old ones, would I be racing out to go um, on the online stores or into your retail environment to go buy one off the rack? No, I'd always wanna get custom fit first, obviously, but to test them, that's the important thing. If you are in the market for a hybrid, then yes, these are an improvement of the old ones and they do require a decent test to see how much they'll work for you. But uh, that's the most important thing. Test, 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 must do that. Anyway, hope you liked the content. If you did, give the old like button down there, thumbs up, give that a click. Also, while you're down there, little red button, subscribe, click that one and also next to it, while you're there, little bell. Click that little bell, that'll let you know next time I upload a video. Hope you're well and we'll see you again soon.